and welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about some of the hidden powers of hue and saturation, the hue and saturation adjustment layer more specifically. Most of us kind of have at least a little bit of understanding of how the hue saturation dialog box works. We're going to jump into some of the cooler things you can do with it. And before we get to that, I want to talk about our sponsor for this month, April of 2016. It's graphicstock.com. They've got over 300,000 stock photos. You sign up over on their website, you get access to all the stock photography you'd ever want or need. They also have vectors and illustrations. Uh, like I said, thousands and thousands and thousands of downloadable stuff. It's all royalty for you. Download it now. You keep it forever, even if you don't renew your subscription. And for right now, tutvid.com viewers can get six months of access for just $39. Check out the link in the description of this video. And hey, let's say you're looking for Nemo. Guess what? Just found him right there. Graphicstock.com. Let's talk about hue saturation. Uh, you can find just the regular hue saturation adjustment under image adjustments hue saturation. We're not going to play around with it there. We're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. This is going to give us uh, an, an adjustment layer here. Well, okay, yep. There's our adjustment layer. Great. And we have a bunch of different options here. I guess first, I mean, hue is just going to change the color of everything in the photo. Let's say you want this red stick of dynamite to be uh, purple or something. Well, we would actually need to come back this way. Uh, there you go, bluish, purplish. Um, but you can see everything in the image changes. His tie is now green. These binders are green. His skin is that bluish, purplish color. So that's really kind of... Uh, messy, um, but it's an option you have. And you also have saturation, which is just, you know, cranking up the saturation or removing all the saturation, just like that. By the way, isn't this a great photo? It's so cool. Uh, and we have just the lightness, so you can just make the image very dark and very bright, and it just, it's very, um, it really kills your uh, contrast. It's not really a great way to adjust brightness, um, but it is useful for something, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that in a moment. You also have an option to colorize and some eyedroppers and color lines, whatever they're for. We're going to talk about all this stuff, though. So, uh, first and foremost, we have this little finger here. Let's say uh, we wanted to change the uh, saturation of his skin tone, or generally just the skin tone. We can just click with our little finger and drag to the right to increase saturation, or to the left to decrease saturation. You can see that that's affecting the reds in his skin, but also the dynamite, but it's not changing the blue in his tie or in this door back here or the binders. I'm going to undo that. Um, we also have all of these different color channels here. We're going to talk about these in just a second. Um, I want to focus more on selecting a specific range to edit. Uh, well, actually, let's just jump into the red color channel real quick, now that I said we're not going to jump into it. Um, but if we want to affect the reds, again, we're looking to change the color of the dynamite without really affecting his skin much. Let's just try this and adjust uh, the dynamite. We make it like orange, but you can see it's really doing bad things to the skin. Well, of course, we could come over here to our, our layer mask and, and paint the hue saturation adjustment away for that, but that's not always going to be an option. Sometimes you might have a hundred little spots like this that you need to very quickly paint away. That's, that's not really the best way to do this. Um, also note that when you go into any one of the color channels, specifically red, it shows us a, what what range of colors are being selected here in our image. So that's kind of interesting. We can stretch it out on one side or really uh, change the focus points in the middle uh, to really, really focus on just a, a more or less narrow swath of color in our image. But there's another way we can select color, and that's with the eyedropper tool. I'm going to grab the plus eyedropper tool, and I'm going to begin by just clicking on the red in the dynamite. So I'm going to select the red in the dynamite, and then I'm going to select, oh, I'm sorry, start with the regular eyedropper. Make your initial selection, then go to the plus eyedropper and start adding additional uh, bits of red, and maybe use the minus eyedropper and just go and subtract stuff up here in his skin. You can see it's sort of changed how much or what colors in our image are going to be affected. And now let's just see our handiwork. When we go ahead and make this change, I mean, it's still making some changes with him. He's got some red on his fingers and on his lips. Um, and maybe we have to live with that. Or maybe we can go in and say, you know what? Uh, we're going to go and remove even that red in his fingers there and beside or here on his knuckles. Make sure it doesn't select any of that. What we need to be careful of is there may just be some of this exact red in other parts of the image, but let's see what this does. Let's change the color. It, it works a little bit better. There we go. We got pink dynamite, or over here we've got orange dynamite, and of course we can change or, or paint away with the mask at this point. Just paint away the subtle changes that are happening in the rest of the image. We can increase the saturation maybe, make it something like that, and maybe even make it a little bit darker. All right, and then at this point we would select our mask, 
with our paintbrush and maybe even reduce the opacity of the paintbrush a little bit, uh, change the size of our paintbrush, and just paint over you know parts of the image that we don't want affected. And because we've selected such a narrow portion of color, other parts of your image that are going to be affected by this hue saturation, it's probably going to be fairly uh, subtle. I mean, that wasn't necessarily subtle, um, but it wasn't nearly as extreme as it was before. And that's going to mean if you do need to paint away, even when you're up against other bright colors and objects, it's going to allow the effect to blend into the image much more effectively. So we went in with hue saturation and we were able to select a specific color, change the color of the dynamite. Now, let's look at another image real quick here. One of the really cool things you can do with hue saturation is because we can select individual color channels, we can do something like, let's say we really want to make these trees green. Well, in a lot of grass and in a lot of leaves, there is a lot of yellow. So let's take the yellow and we can see our yellow is hanging out right over here on our color wheel. That means if we want to make our yellow green, we need to move this little arrow to the right. We don't need to move it back to green. You see here, if we move back to green, it's actually going to make it red because this whole color hue wheel is really beginning when we you know choose yellow our point you have to imagine that it's like right here really so instead of moving back to the green area we need to move it as if our point is there which means we really need to move it over here to like the blues and you can see now we've got this very very bright green what that means is we want to probably remove some saturation maybe make it a little bit darker make that green a little bit darker right here's a point where the lightness slider can be very very useful all right. Uh, one of the things we can do is go to green and maybe we want to pump up the saturation of the green and maybe increase the brightness of the green a little bit as well. And you can see we've really changed the color of our trees. All right. Let's just shut that layer off. There's before. There's after. OK, that's not it. We're going to whoop. I didn't want to do that. Let's just pop this back out here over the image. Um, let's go ahead and select our blues channel as well and start playing with the sky. So maybe we want to introduce a little bit more green into the sky, maybe make the sky a little bit darker. And I do have to uh, give you a very strong warning. When you're working with 8-bit images, and this is an 8-bit image, and the, the opposite would be a 12-bit or a 16 or 32-bit image, really 16 or 32, um, you're going to be able to push and pull blues. When you start pushing and pulling the color blue in a photo, it can begin to degenerate very quickly um, and start to look really, really bad. Uh, so if we like make this super dark, you can already start to see a lot of noise appearing up there uh, and then remove more saturation or maybe increase the saturation a little bit. Let's make this a little bit more green maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Let's see. Yeah, maybe something like that. We're going for like almost a commercial photography look here. Um, there we go, something like that. And you can see that because we're using hue saturation, it's automatically changed the color of the reflection relative to the color of the sky automatically. So the reflection in the river all the way over there and right here is changed to just match the photo the way that it should. So here we can shut off hue saturation. There was before, there's after. So one hue saturation adjustment layer can make a huge amount of difference if you know how to use it. Now, one last thing before I let you go, we're going to create a new layer here. That's just a new layer icon. And I'm going to just grab the brush tool and I'm going to paint with my brush tool just a big daub of of black, all right, just a big bunch of black. And here I'm going to go image adjustments, hue saturation. This is just because I want to show you this colorize option here. If you tick on colorize, you can add color to something that has no color. Now, in terms of black, you see here I can boost saturation and I'm still not getting anything. That's because if you're working with black, you this is where the lightness slider becomes very important. You bring black up, obviously. So uh, the reason I like to go with saturation first is because it kind of lets me know where I stop on the lightness slider. If I go too much lightness, I mean, I just get solid white. If I go too bright, it's going to be like this light pink. But if I get it right in the happy zone, I get a really, really rich red. Now, obviously, if you're working with the color white, you would just reduce the lightness until you get the right color. And then at this point, you can you know swap the hue to whatever color you like, maybe like a nice uh, bright orange. We can make this just a little bit brighter. Hit OK. And you could set this to something like the blend mode of screen. And you sort of have uh, a little bit of a sunrise happening here in your photo as well. So for the hue saturation feature in Photoshop, the adjustment, really, it's not a feature as much as an adjustment tool. It is huge. It's powerful. It's so great, all the things you can do with it. And once you learn how to use it, it literally becomes like second nature. I use it all the time and don't even realize I use it. It's really, really great. So, hue saturation in Photoshop. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.